Well, hello there. Welcome once more to Crunchwell's Kitchen. And if this is your first time stopping by, a very warm approval to you. So today I'm sharing with you my recipe for palava sauce, known to our Nigerian brothers and sisters as igusi soup. And what is different about my sauce is I'm not making it with palm oil. I'm making this with olive oil. It is always a hit in my household and I hope you enjoy it. So here are the ingredients you will need and as always you will find a list of everything that went in here in my description box. So I am using roasted garlic and that is one thing I wanted to talk about. Not for any special reason that was the only garlic I had at home so that's why I used it. You could use any form of garlic, powdered, whole, whatever, minced. I have my fresh tomatoes, my smoked mackerel that I made at home, some mushrooms. I have two kinds. I have the white mushrooms and mushrooms from Ghana, as you could see. I have my baby spinach. Yes, I always want the very fresh of ingredients in my palava sauce. So I cut up my spinach by myself. And as you know, if you are back home in Ghana or anywhere else that you can get contumery, that is the ingredient you will use. In my pot is my smoked turkey wings as well as cow skin or willy and I've blended half of my onion and ginger, added salt and I'm going to let that cook. And whilst it cooks, we will start making the actual stew. So I have my oil, about a, a cup and a half of oil in here now and I've added my sliced onions, the other half of the onions. And, and now I'm blending my tomatoes, pepper and um, the roasted garlic and my meat could use some more water so I added just a little bit of water and my snails covered and then we'll focus more on our stew at this point so my onions as you can see are caramelizing and I think it's a good time now to add my tomatoes so I've added my blended tomatoes pepper and onions as well as garlic yes and I am going to let this cook together with my tomato paste which I'm adding right now So I'll give it a stir to make sure the tomato paste and my blended tomatoes are well mixed together. And then I'll cover and let cook. And whilst I do this, I am going to start grinding my agusi. That is agushi as we call it in Ghana. And these are melon seeds. And I'm going to use my spice grinder to do this. You could use your blender or food processor. Uh, to do this as well or you could buy the powdered one so this is good now and I'm going to pour it out so I can continue with the rest of it and then I'll set it aside until later so I've checked on my tomato sauce it is doing good as you can see it's thickening it's not so liquidy anymore and it is beginning to smell good and if you're making this that you could eat it at home you know and not planning to take it anywhere you could put some money in there but when I make it like this we take it other places you know to work and all and so I just don't put more money in here. So my meats were cooked, my cow skin, turkey wings, and snails, and I put them in here in the stew so they will absorb the flavors of the stew and cook some more. As you see, the stew still has some liquid. And I've added my one Maggi shrimp tablet. You could use any stock cube of choice, but I like to use Maggi. And now I'm going to cover it and let it cook some more. Now let's focus on our agushi once again. So I'm going to add about two cups of water and I'm trying to make something like a paste to put in the stew. And this way you want to make it in such a texture that it will be thick enough so when it cooks it can form the clumps. And one secret that my mom taught me is to add your salt to this agusi mix before you put it in the stew. She says, and I think it's true, that is the way to get your clumps formed. And so I have done that and I'm going to set it aside to swell so it will thicken even some more. And whilst I have it, I'm waiting, 
I am going to flake my mackerel so I can put that in the stew as well. I have a recipe here for you for the mackerel and I made this one is slightly different to be more like the one sold on the market and I will share the recipe with you as well. And now I am slicing my mushrooms. These are the white mushrooms. I also have mushrooms from Ghana that I'm going to use as well. And you could put in any kind of mushroom. I normally would put in shiitake mushrooms because I feel like those uh, are very similar to the ones we get from palm trees in Ghana. But since I have something from Ghana, I'm using the white, which is cheaper anyway. And now we're doing the spinach. So I'm cutting up my spinach. And I'm not being particular about how I cut it up because it cooks and it shrinks so much that no matter how big you cut them, it's still going to look beautiful in there still. But if you're using contemporary, then you have to be mindful and, you know, do a great job. And here is everything beautiful, ready to go into the stew when it's time for it to. So now that we're done prepping all our other ingredients while the stew was cooking, and really that's how I cook most of the time, you know. You always rush in, you know. I feel like once I start it, I can get the other ingredients ready. And our stew is doing perfectly well. It is thickening, the meat is tasting divine. And I think it's a good time for me to add in my frozen mushrooms from Ghana because you know it is a harder kind of mushroom so i want it to be in here now to absorb some of the flavors and so it is in now i give it a stir it cook for about five minutes to absorb some good flavors from this stew and five minutes later i add in my agushi mix and we are not going to stir it at this point we are trying to stir but not really you know like vigorous stirring we are trying to lift parts of the stew to allow the agusi to settle on the bottom or in you know to be covered with the oil and part of the sauce that way it is able to cook beautifully and form perfect clumps or clots for you and that is what you really want when you make your agushi stew and now i'm going to cover this and reduce my flame to the very lowest and allow this to cook for about 10 minutes and as you can see I'm cooking my yams now as the stew is almost done and 10 minutes later I uncovered gave it a very gentle stir because some of the agushi is still in here in liquid forms even though I have these beautiful clots in here it could still use some cooking so I'm going to cover again and let it cook through some more and this will be for about another five minutes and five minutes later just look at that I can stir the way I want to stir because it is all cooked and all the clumps that I could make has already been made so there's no need being cautious anymore The meat is tender and you can see it has absorbed so much of the stew and the flavors. And now I add in my white mushrooms because it doesn't take much to cook these mushrooms. They cook so fast. And my mackerel, which is already smoked, we could eat it like that without cooking it. So that goes in now and our stew is almost done. So I cover it one more time to let everything cook through and still on the lowest setting and about eight minutes later our mushroom has softened up it has absorbed the juices of the stew and everything is just you know working in harmony to bring so much good aroma in this house it smells divine and I am hungry I can't wait to dig in and at this point, I'll add my spinach, which is the very last ingredient to go in. And it doesn't take more than five minutes for this to cook through because as I will always tell you, I cook a big batch of food all the time because that is the way to assure that there's always food in my house. 
And so when I cook my stews, especially with the vegetables, I don't cook it all the way through because every time you warm it, you're still cooking it. So one thing you should know when you follow my recipes, you might want to half it or, you know, just do a portion, you know, divide your ingredients because I cook a lot of food all the time and I don't want you to make too much food than you need. So stir till everything is well combined like this. And you can see the spinach is already softening up and now I'm going to let it cook for the next five minutes and we're done. This is pretty simple, right? So I'm going to cover now. And five minutes later, just look. A pot full of just goodness. It smells good. It tastes amazing. It smells divine. You should really give this a try. And you can have it with your eba. You can have it with your rice, your yam, your plantain. Whatever you choose to have it with, it is going to be good. So we are done and perfect timing enough. My yams are ready. So I'm just going to dish this out so we can have some den den. So try this either with uh, olive oil, any kind of vegetable oil or palm oil and you will really, really be happy with the result. It is good. Talk about crowd pleasing. Just imagine making some plantains and serving yourself and your family or your guests with this bowl of gorgeousness. They won't stop thanking you they really want and they'll be asking for more and more and more just look at this tell me is that not just beautiful try it yes try it and so we paired it beautifully with our yams boiled egg and avocado and mm, then I was amazing so until I come your way next time with something delicious be loving be kind be happy <laughs> <laughs>